Good morning, everybody. I'm heading out to Wilmington today to do a couple calls. One of them is in Wilmington. One of them is in a town about 35 miles south of Wilmington called Southport. I'm heading out to take a look at a full drain pan of water. So uh, that's probably a drain issue, uh, my expert opinion. And then I'm heading down to Southport to change an evaporator coil on a nine-year-old Goodman Air Handler. I have been sick for the last two days, which has really put a cramp in my style because I had a lot to do before I was sick, and now I have a whole lot to do in less time. So I'm trying to rebound a little bit. Had to get the truck repaired yesterday, or really update the brakes because they were gone. Uh, change out one of the rotors. So I'm off to do some service calls, kick some ass, take some names, bring you guys along for the ride. All right, guys, I'm heading across the Cape Fear Memorial Bridge. There is the said river, Cape Fear. And uh, I just left the house. We didn't get any film on it. I was kind of in a hurry because I have a coil to change this afternoon. It's a train air handler. I think it was TWE, ton and a half, 13 seer system. I think. It's either 12 or 13 seer. I had a 12 inch flex coming off the back of it, which is. 12 inch piping is sort of rated for that amount of air. But on the return side, typically you might go one size larger uh, to slow the speed of the air. This had 12 inch flex. It was kind of doubled back over the top of the unit, crunched halfway shut, going to a 10 by 20 filter grill with a dirty filter in it. Um, even with the clean filter in it, that would have been not good. It was a pleated filter, it was dirty. We had a 190 pound head pressure, R22, 64 pound suction pressure. It was 84 degrees in the room at five degrees of superheat. Now that comes off looking, if you don't look at the pressure on the low side, like an overcharge. Of course, once you see the low side pressure, you realize that it's an airflow issue and you're not getting any superheat because you're not getting any airflow. If you were to remove charge to go to the proper superheat, your pressure would then drop, and once it drops to around 58 pounds, you would start to have freezing on the coil. Now this room will no doubt have freezing when the room gets colder. If they were to run the AC, let's say it's 84, and they ran it down to 72, it would no doubt pass beyond 58 pounds and start to freeze up. Uh, the issue was water in the drain pan, overflowing drain pan, and that's more than likely where that came from. How do you solve the problem? You have to redo the duct work. This is, this is just a good old fashioned labor. Redo the duct system, fix things up. Drain pan was actually cracked as well. It's a plastic drain pan hanging over the side of a plywood stand. All the years of stress, it cracked it in two spots. So it was just a mess. Uh, the coil did show signs of leaking. I ran the H10 across it. It wasn't a screamer for sure, but in a couple of spots it did sort of accelerate, kind of go off after you left it there for a couple seconds. So it was leaking, not, not a dramatic leak, but it's a 10 year old system, so who knows what's gonna happen. It is a rental property. Yep, and there's the next person. All right guys, here we're up in the attic in Southport, North Carolina. Some interesting drain work there. <laughs> uh, don't know if I would've done it like that. There's a risk here that if the drain backs up, it'll back up into the secondary pan. And if it does that, then it will overflow because I don't see a float switch anywhere in the pan. So I'm letting the pressure off. There was only nitrogen on the system. It's been on there for a couple weeks, lost about 50 pounds. The coil is leaking pretty bad. The outer coil actually has a very small leak, but they don't have enough money to repair that. Or they have chosen not to repair it, they just replace the indoor coil even though that is not a very wise idea as far as you can't do a proper repair and pull a vacuum on a system that has even a minute leak but this is what it is so we're changing out a coil the good thing is in a case like this you have the copper wrapping around the attic a big U pattern it's very easy to get enough copper to just cut it off and bring it right into the next coil so it should be a pretty easy install of the coil in the other side, the Goodman puts the piston right at the entrance to the air handler, so it's very easy to reach that as well. Bar we taking the piston out, save it, and away we go. All right, guys, here's our Goodman coil, a new one all in place. 
with a little strap on as well as there's a little groove it fits into in the back which I don't think the other coil was fitting into because when I took the strap off it fell down. Uh, if you don't put it in the groove in the back air will just rush around the back side of it and it will not be cooled. But this is a copper coil. Most of the older Goodman air handler coils are still made as copper coils. And this will be the third coil that's been in this particular air handler. You can always tell what kind of attention was paid as well whenever you come back on a job like this. So instead of removing this rubber gasket, they just brazed it in place, melted it, and burned the cabinet. You be the judge, YouTube. Since SuperTech here melted my grommet, it's pretty much crap now. What I do is I take my armor flex, I just run it right up and stick it into the cabinet. It forms a pretty good seal I can tape around it, but it'll it'll work. Lazy ass bastard. Button back together just as pretty and lovely as we were beforehand anyway. Drains are done again in the same awesome style they started. And I am heading downstairs to check the nitrogen test and then we're going to put it into a vacuum. The pressure test with Fillmore gauge is uh, 100 pounds. We are still there, so we are good to go. Hello guys, I'm leaving my evaporator change out, sitting in a little bit of small town traffic here. Something's afoot, I guess. Evaporator change out went fine. I couldn't film the very end of it because it rained on me hard. Uh, I put about, I think it was seven and a half pounds of refrigerator in the machine. Charged it to I think 21 degrees of super heat and it was a happy machine and it took off and everything was great. After I changed the capacitor, which was bad, and the compressor wasn't starting, which was frustrating, but I figured it was probably the capacitor. I had to break out the old fedora, which I basically feel like Indiana Jones when I wear that. So that's why I wear it. But that's about it for today. I'm heading home so I can take off and go to Myrtle Beach, meet my family who's already heading down there for a softball tournament and a weekend of relaxation. And I will see you guys on the next one. Well guys, there's good points and bad points to running your own business and having good customer service. The evaporator we changed today, I had to change the capacitor on the compressor uh, because it was weak. Now this old reciprocating compressor. So the homeowner called me a little while ago, it's been a few hours since I was gone, said it wasn't cooling upstairs. The breaker had been turned, he said it wasn't tripped, it was off. He flipped it back on and it came back on, but he doesn't think the compressor's running. So I guarantee we have a compressor failure. So just to, uh, when it rains it pours sort of deal. Nothing we could have known, the unit had no refrigerant in it. It was actually already diagnosed as well as a leaking evaporator. Just sort of a crappy thing to happen. But I'm gonna go home, or I'm gonna go down there and take a look at it. I'm actually headed down to Myrtle Beach. But I'm gonna stop by his house on the way down there and take a look and so we know where to go whenever I get back as far as a repair or replacement. 
suck. Ought to suck. <laughs> well, guys, I left the house. I'm heading. I'm in between Southport, North Carolina, and the South Carolina, North Carolina line. Heading down to Myrtle Beach. Very sad to say, the poor guy, his compressor is gone. It won't even attempt to start. Whenever I was servicing the unit today at the very end, I thought I smelled something very faintly, and I was actually assuming it was leak stock that I smelled. And it turns out that's probably what it was. I did an acid test just to make sure there wasn't anything else present that accounted for some kind of raunchy smell, but uh, was not the case. Uh, I'm assuming it was leak stop because the unit was leaking. Um, of course, I don't use leak stop. I really don't like it. But a lot of people do use it. And now our compressor is not even attempting to start. Uh, electrically, no problem. Three windings electrically, they're perfect. No damage wiring, no overload triggered. Nothing. Will not start. But that's the way it goes sometimes, I guess. So we'll be coming back to that one, doing a few more repairs. But I am off for the weekend. Ready to go have some fun in the sun. Yeah. 